Okay, so let's look at an application of the binomial distribution and learning how to use the different functions in Excel. So what we have to remember is with the binomial distribution, we're looking for a specific number of successes out of a specific number of trials. So we always have to be given the number of trials. And another thing about each trial is that the probability of a success, however we decide to define that, is the same on each trial. And each trial only has two outcomes, like a yes or no kind of a situation. So here what we have is uh, we have home buyers who do renovation on their homes within their first five years of home ownership. And the claim here is that 40% of these home buyers will do that. And what we have been given is 20 homeowners are selected. So that means we have a sample of size 20. So I'm going to write the information over here on the left. I'm going to say n equals 20 and p equals 0 0.4 for this binomial probability distribution. And what we're going to be looking at is probabilities involving different numbers of successes. So one way to handle a problem like this, especially when you have a larger number of trials, is we could create a probability distribution. And the first thing I want to talk about is a function called binome dot dist and what that finds for us is a binomial probability when we feed it some information so i want to double click on that and you notice the inputs that it's expecting from us are the number of successes the number of trials the probability of success and then whether or not we're finding a cumulative probability or an individual probability so as far as the number of trials i want to reference the left the column to the left here in cell B12, the formula is covering it, but it, there is a zero there to signify zero successes. And since I'm going to fill this formula down, I want to reference the cell rather than the value. So I'll put in a comma there. Now, number of trials, we already have to find that to be 20. The probability of success, we already know, is 0.4. And it is not cumulative, so we're going to put false. Now, notice as soon as I type in the F, it comes up as a, an option to do false. And then as you see, there is the probability. So it's, we basically have a 0% chance of there being zero successes here. Now, if you notice this little box here, it's in the lower right-hand corner of that box. If I double click that, it automatically fills it down to the rest of the values. So as you can see, we have all of those probabilities there for us. So that's how we can answer at least the first three questions, or we could use another function, but I want to illustrate them both for you. So what is the probability that fewer than four have done renovations in the first five years? Well, that means that we have zero through three. Fewer than four means I don't include four. So we're looking at those three pro four probabilities added together. Now, another nice function you could use is one called binome.dist.range. And what we're looking at there is similar information. We have a number of trials, which is 20. We have a probability of success, which is 0.4. And in this particular case, you want between zero and three successes. So add those up and that's what it gives us. We could round that to however many places we want to. So looking at part B, we want between 10 and 15. We'll assume that that is inclusive. So binome, dist, range, and the same information, 20, 0.4, 10, 15. And in the last one, we want more than 16, which means we want 17 and up. So we're looking at that same function again. We have 20, 0.4, 17, and 20. So there's our probability. Notice that is small, which does make sense based on our distribution because if you add up 17 through 20, we're basically adding up zeros if we have four decimal places. Now for D, just looking at another version or another uh, aspect of this, if 800 such homeowners were surveyed, how many would you expect? Well, remember that the mean is N times P for a probability distribution. So this is going to be equal to, and we had 800 owners, so it's 800 times 0.4, which is 320. And remember that the standard deviation is the square root of NPQ. So typing that in formula here, SQRT, we're still talking about the 800 people, times 0 0.4 times 0 0.6. And it's probably going to be a decimal, and there's your standard deviation. 
So there is how we can use Excel to answer questions about the binomial distribution. Thank you so much for watching.